Hello everyone, in this video, I will be discussing bank reconciliation and proof of cash. Let's get started. Bank reconciliation is simply the reconciliation of the cash balance per books and the cash balance per bank. It is done monthly and is prepared only for demand deposit or checking accounts. Ideally, the cash balance per book and cash balance per bank should be equal because they reflect the balances of reciprocal accounts. A debit in the company's books should have a corresponding credit in the bank's records. Likewise, a credit in the company's books should have a corresponding debit in the bank's records. Here we are given company access cash records and the bank statement provided by the company's bank. Observe that the ending cash balances are not equal. The cash balance per books is 50,000, while the cash balance per banks is 84,000. We investigate the difference by simply comparing the items in the company's cash records and the bank statement. Observe that there are some items that are present in the company's cash records that are not reflected in the bank statement. These are referred to as the bank reconciling items. There are also items that are in the bank statement that cannot be found in the company's cash records, and these are called the book reconciling items. The book and bank reconciling items are needed in arriving at the adjusted or correct cash balance. The first method of bank reconciliation is the adjusted balance method. This method starts with the unadjusted cash balances and ends with the adjusted cash balance. The book reconciling items are the following. First are credit memos, which are items credited by the bank but not yet debited by the company as cash receipts. These are added to the cash balance per books. Next are debit memos, which are items debited by the bank but not yet credited by the company as cash disbursements. These are deducted in our bank reconciliation. Last are book errors, which are added or deducted depending on the nature of the error. The bank reconciling items are as follows. First are deposits in transit, which are cash collections debited by the company but not yet credited by the bank. These are added to the cash balance per bank. Next are outstanding checks, which are checks credited by the company but not yet debited by the bank. Outstanding checks should exclude certified checks which have been charged by the bank already. Outstanding checks are deducted in our bank reconciliation. Last are bank errors, which are added or deducted depending on the nature of the error. Take note that the adjusted cash balance should be the same regardless if you start with cash balance per books or cash balance per bank. The crucial point here is knowing which items are book reconciling items and which ones are bank reconciling items. The other two bank reconciliation methods are book to bank and bank to book. These methods start with the unadjusted cash balance of one party and end with the unadjusted cash balance of the other party. The formulas for the two methods start similar to the adjusted method. Up to this point, observe that the formula should give us the adjusted cash balance. But these formulas don't end here, since our goal is the unadjusted cash balance of the other party. From here on, the rule is to reverse the signs of the other party's reconciling items. When we compute using book to bank, the signs of the bank reconciling items will be reversed. Likewise, when we compute using bank to book, the book reconciling items will be reversed. Going back to our illustration, we can now identify the book and bank reconciling items. For the book reconciling items, we have 15,000 as credit memo and 5,000 and 1,000 as debit memos. For the bank reconciling items, we have 40,000 as deposit in transit and 37,000 and 28,000 as outstanding checks. We plug in these reconciling items to our formulas and we get the following bank reconciliations under each method. You can pause the video to refer to your notes if you need some more time to reflect on the solution. Now we proceed to a brief overview on proof of cash. We are given some information from company access cash records and bank statement. Observe that there are two months involved, January and February. From the data given, we can easily prepare the bank reconciliation for January since all the necessary information is already given. 
The January Bank Reconciliation is as follows. Balance per book 50,000 plus credit memo 50,000 minus debit memo 5,000 minus another debit memo 1,000 is equal to adjusted balance 59,000. Balance per bank 84,000 plus deposit in transit 40,000 minus a standing check 65,000 is equal to adjusted balance 59,000. But how about for February? Because the unadjusted cash balances and reconciling items for February are not readily given, we will have to solve for them. First, to solve for the February cash balance per books or unadjusted book balance, we have the following formula. Beginning book balance, add book debits during the month, less book credits during the month, equals ending book balance. Second, to solve for the February cash balance per bank or unadjusted bank balance, we have the following formula. Beginning bank balance, add bank credits during the month, less bank debits during the month, equals ending bank balance. Third, to solve for the February deposits in transit, we have the following formula. Beginning deposits in transit, add cash receipts deposited during the month, equals total deposits to be acknowledged by bank. This is computed as such because the deposits in transit from the previous period are expected to enter the bank's records in the current period, along with the deposits during the current period. Total deposits to be acknowledged by bank, less deposits acknowledged by bank during the month, equals ending deposits in transit. And lastly, to solve for the February outstanding checks, we have the following formula. Beginning outstanding checks, add checks drawn by depositor during the month, equals total checks to be paid by bank. This is computed as such because the outstanding checks from the previous period are expected to be reflected in the bank's records in the current period, along with the checks drawn during the current period. Total checks to be paid by bank less checks paid by bank during the month equals ending outstanding checks. Now that we have all the necessary information, we can now prepare the bank reconciliation for February to arrive at the adjusted cash balance of 80000 So far, we have prepared two separate bank reconciliations to reconcile the cash balances in January and February. Another way to do this is through the preparation of a proof of cash. Here is what a proof of cash looks like. Proof of cash is a simultaneous reconciliation of the cash balances of two dates. In this case, we have January 31 and February 28. The proof of cash has four columns. It is an expanded version of the usual bank reconciliation as it includes receipts and disbursements. The first and last columns are exactly the same as the separate bank reconciliations we have prepared earlier. What about the columns in between? The bank collected a note in January amounting to 15,000 pesos. The entity was not able to record the 15,000 pesos as cash receipt in January. The amount only entered the books as cash receipt in February when it should have been recorded in the books in January. So we add the 15,000 pesos to the January balance per books to arrive at the adjusted cash balance in January and deduct the same from the February cash receipts. The bank collected another note in February amounting to 20,000 pesos. The entity has not yet recorded this as a cash receipt in February when it should have had already. So we add the 20,000 pesos to the February cash receipts and add it to the February balance per books to arrive at the adjusted cash balance in February. The rest of the proof of cash follows the same logic. A tip in checking the correctness of the proof of cash is that similar amounts that are side by side have different signs and similar amounts that are apart have similar signs. It's as they opposites attract. If you're not getting proof of cash yet, do not panic. This is not included in your qualifying exam. But understanding the basics of proof of cash will help you a lot when you take up auditing problems. And those are all for bank reconciliation and basic proof of cash. 
Please feel free to leave your questions and comments in the comment section of my Facebook post. Don't forget to try out the sample problems posted in our FB page to further refresh your memory and enhance your understanding. Ciao!